Well, there we go. We got good high speed communications established now. Oh, hi there. Welcome to BSF Recovery Team. Give me a little update on uh, the top kick here. Uh, some of you might know in our last video at the end there, um, we did our first trip with the top kick and we were having a little bit of trouble. Well, our first trip with uh, the Kodiak isn't going so well. Uh, we got some troubles. We got uh, check engine light. We have uh, reduced engine power, alarms going off. And uh, fighting with that problem, then we uh, blew an inside duel on the trailer. Uh, we were having a check engine light. We had uh, reduced engine power light and alarms going off. Well, we looked at it on the road and we found a uh, loose connector. I'll tell you more about that later. We did a uh, field repair or on-site road repair to the connector, uh, but we still had problems after that. So when I got back, I uh, attached the scan tool to it and found out I could communicate on the low speed communication circuit, but not on the high speed circuit. So without being able to communicate on the high speed circuit, I kind of knew where to go. That and with all the weird problems going on. I started checking my grounds and I found a huge voltage drop between the cab and the frame. But now, with the uh, ability of the data bus tool, it's a program that GM has uh, that we can install on a laptop to actually watch the voltage, the measured voltage on a communication circuit. And I can see now that we have good established communications. Uh, unfortunately though, by taking away the grounds and cleaning them up, uh, we lost all the codes that were stored in memory. So I don't have any codes to, uh, to go by. We just have to uh, hopefully assume that this will cure most of our problem between that and uh, the connector that we uh, found, which I'll show you in a minute. First, let's go look at uh, where the ground problem was. This one right here is our main battery ground, our main battery cable to ground. And uh, right beside it here, down over here, I don't know if you can see this one. Um, this is a chassis ground. It comes from a uh, bulkhead further back on the chassis uh, that grounds uh, a bunch of the systems. And also on this one is a ground strap that comes from the engine. And then there's also a ground from the uh, cab uh, that attaches up here. I don't know if we can see this one. Um, Let's move the camera here and we'll see if we can show you where it is. Yeah, you can't see it very well. There's too much stuff in the way, but it's right here. Uh, and there's a uh, braided strap that goes from here uh, down to the chassis. And that braided strap was where we had the problem. Uh, I was having a huge voltage drop in that braided strap. Even after we cleaned it up, we still had a huge voltage drop. So what I did is I just took and uh, put a redundant cable in uh, from that attachment down to and piggybacked it on top of our battery ground strap. And then I measured it and I had no more voltage drop between the cab and the uh, negative post on the battery. Okay, with the grounds good and the communications established, Hopefully that will cure most of our problems, but we still have this connector that we found uh, that we kind of did a roadside repair to that really should be fixed also. So let's take a look at that. Here's the connector I was speaking of. It's on the air valve. That's the diesel's equivalent to a throttle body. On the road I found that this connector was loose and just taped on. So on the road we did the roadside repair with uh, some tie straps to secure it. But our problem was still there due to our voltage drop through our ground or resistance through our ground. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we still want to repair this connector uh, so it's secure on there without uh, using the tie wraps. So I got a replacement here and uh, replacement with pigtails. 
So it's a new connector to go on here with the wires and the pins already in it. We just need to splice that into the harness. We don't want to splice that in uh, with the supplied uh, connectors though. Even though they're nice uh, weather seal uh, type butt connectors, this circuit is a varied voltage circuit uh, that has a redundant circuit, or there's two varied voltage circuits that measure the position of the air valve. And uh, through the algorithm, their percentages have to match. And if they don't match, uh, then that's when it sets uh, a reduced engine power code and uh, puts you into a limp mode. So we want to make sure that there is absolutely no difference or no resistance voltage drop through the circuit. So when we splice these in here, we don't want to use anything that might compromise uh, the integrity of the circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually solder these in to the harness. Okay, let's see if we can uh, get this done before we lose all of our light. Well, look at that. The connector isn't actually broken. Now that I took all the tape off, I am able to push it on all the way and it clips in. It uh, wasn't pushing on and clipping in all the way when we were out on the road. So it looks like I don't have to do this, which is just fine with me. Well, that just goes to show you, sometimes in the attempt to fix a problem, taping up the connector, actually created another one. Well, I hope we have everything fixed. Only time will tell. We'll have to get some road miles on it to see. Thanks for watching, BSF Recovery Team. Keep wheeling, be safe out there, and maybe we'll see you in the woods.